Hey, good morning, Corona people. Wasi again. All right, this is going to be a real quick video. I always try to keep these things short and sweet. Um, working on about, I think, a little bit more than three hours sleep. You know, because I was um, doing a power job last night, man. So that's going to make sure that this video is uh, short because I know by the afternoon, man, that sleep going to kick in. So anyway, just wanted to do a quick video. Uh, I've been asked about the feeder wires that I use on the um, on the generators to the distro boxes. So I'm just going to give a quick tutorial on how to build these things properly because some people... Um, they'll they'll build them, but they don't build them right. Because sometimes I'll buy like you know if there's an auction or whatever, I'll buy used wire if I could get it. As you know, I just like believe in making sure that if I'm doing a job or I'm working, I want to keep my name right. So I always check stuff, and when I check the wires, a lot of times they're not built correctly. So I just build them over. Anyway, real quick, I'm gonna show you what you're gonna need if you want to build these cams. Uh, this applies for the 400 amp, you know, the smaller ones or whatever, you know, across the board, man. This is just the right way to do it. You're gonna basically need um, you're gonna need an exacto knife. You're gonna need a good strong pair of cutters, right? A nice pair of pliers, a flathead screwdriver. You know, nothing too small though. Like um, I say maybe about nine millimeter, seven millimeter between that range. And um, you're also gonna need a 5.5 millimeter hex. And that should be all you need, all right? So we're gonna run through this real quick. This one, this, this um, first of all, this is this is what's called two-aught cable, right? Two-aught cable. So, uh, let me see. I'm gonna show you how you write that. Um, two-aught cable, for the people that don't know, I know a lot of people that may be watching or whatever, they already know. Um, how, here it is right here. I already got it written down because I was trying to get some pricing from Sunbelt. But that's it right there. It's basically two slash zero. That's two watt. And if you want to go up to the larger size, it's four slash zero. I know typically with American wire gauge, the larger the number, the smaller it is. But when you get into the O's, the OTS, the larger the number, the larger it is. The, the actual inverse is true. All right. So that's just something to keep in mind. A little, a little nugget of information or whatever you want to call it that. All right, so basically you got your wire. You got your two-watt cable. I get rid of this. You got your um, you got your two-watt cable, right? This one is partially made up, so you can see what I did, right? First thing you're going to do is you're going to take your boot. This is your cam boot, and you're going to cut it back so it'll fit over the cable because they come pretty, pretty small. So you cut it to get it to fit, fit over the actual cable that you're using. So right now in this particular instance, I'm using two-watt cable, so I need to cut it back to where it says 0.6, right? So if you could see it right there, it says 0.6, that's in inches. So once you slice that off right there, you'll be able to get the actual boot over the wire because it has to slip over it. So you see right here what I did? I slipped the boot over already. Then you put on your hardware, all right? So this right here is brass. This is a brass fitting. This is what actually connects the uh, the wire to your generator, your, your distro, all that good stuff. So this is... This is solid brass. You can hear it, man. It's pretty thick. All right. So before you put the brass fittings on there, you got the wire. It comes with this copper, this little copper tape. It's not really tape. It's actually thin metal. You take the little copper and you, after you got your wire cut back, right? Let me, I'm moving, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me tell you how to cut the wire back. The way you cut the wire back is you'd see the fitting right here. You see where the, these screw holes are, these two holes right here. That's what's going to, um, have the hex screws in there that are going to hold the wire in place So what you do you look in here, you see you got a certain amount of depth What I do is I slip it over here and then wherever it stops That's where I cut the wire back. All right, so when it when it stops right here, I slice the insulation right there So now I got the right length for this to fit in here and I slice my insulation, right? I'm doing this with one hand so I'm kind of you know fraying the wire a little bit which I don't do that I usually keep everything nice and neat once that's done, then you slip your 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 uh, your copper your copper um, I guess you would call it a conductor. It helps conduct the electricity. You slip that over there, but I don't. You don't slip it over there like the way it is now. It's like this because I had already wrapped it. It comes like this, and you take it and you wrap it around the actual copper wire. 
All right, so that's going to give you extra conductivity for the copper wire, right? So that's done. Once that's done, then you could slip this over, you know, you slip your um, your hardware over that copper sheath and the actual wire. And then you're going to use your hardware screws, which are these two screws right here. You see, they're kind of small. They slip in here and then they screw it on and that's what locks this whole assembly together, right? Once you do that, this is a very important part and this is where a lot of guys don't, they don't do this and that's why I don't, you know, when I buy these used wires or whatever, if I, if I do, I always check. You see this piece of copper right here? It's like a, the thickness of a hanger, right? This is very important. This is how it comes. It comes like this. This, you take it, you wrap it around a small part of the insulation and you twist it, right? You twist it up until it gets like this. This is important because when all of this is connected together, what it does is it actually gives the actual assembly strength. So say you got this somewhere and somebody steps on the wire accidentally and it, and it kind of gets pulled. This actual copper piece of metal that's wrapped around the insulation helps hold it so it doesn't snatch out of the hardware. It doesn't just pull out of it. You see what I'm saying? So this is extremely critical, but a lot of people don't put that on there. All right, so that's just something to keep in mind. So, like I said, man, I just wanted to drop in real quick and show you the bits and pieces of these um these cams. Uh, and that's basically how you put it together. It's not that hard, not that difficult, but you just got to do it right and make sure you follow all the, the steps or whatever, and you'll have yourself a nice cam wire. These are, um these wires are actually, these are welding wires. That's the ones that I like to use. They're very soft. They're very pliable, very easy to bend. You see what I'm saying? You don't want any cheap wire that's thick and hard to move because, trust me, man, you try to run 100 to 200 feet of this, it's a pain in the ass trying to, you know, move thick, hard wire. So I use a very good heavy-duty welding cable, handles 600 volts, and um, these are made in USA, all right? So I like to use things that are made in USA. So uh, just keep that in mind. So... That's how you do it. This is the hardware. You know, all of these things, they got part numbers and everything on them. You know, this is the actual male hardware. Uh, this is the female. You see what I'm saying? One little tip, sometimes people, when they're putting these on, it's kind of tight, right? And it's kind of hard to slip the uh, the boot over the wire. So, you know, some people, um, they use different, different uh, greases or whatever. I remember Jay-Z had a song talking about... Um, if it's tight, get the KY jelly. I think he was talking about these. He was talking about these boots. You know, just um, just a little side note. So yeah, if it's real hard for you to do it, it's not hard for me because I always cut them like pretty much right where they need to be so they move pretty easily. You know what I mean? But if it's a little difficult for you to get them to move, you could always add a little grease or whatever. I don't recommend KY jelly, but you know, that was in, uh, what's the name? JG's song. All right, so and they, always, they also come with these little graphs. This shows the ampacity, right? The amount of current that the different wire gauges can handle. So if you see right here where it says two ot two slash zero, at 90 degrees C, it can handle 300 amps, right? Well, actually, yeah, 300 amps. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. At the, with a two ot wire, that's the wire that I'm using. The four ot, which is the larger wire at the very bottom, four slash zero, at 90 degrees C, it can handle 400 amps. The reason why I'm pointing out the temperature because the copper wire conducts differently based on temperature. So that's just another little piece of information. I'm gonna show you some um some completed wires. See, I got um I got a whole box of these, man. So the first part of the morning, I'm gonna do that. Obviously, I had some snacks. I had a little a little food, man. Big up to the wife for always cooking and keeping me fed. And um oh, a little project I'm working on. So. This is going to be coming out soon. I'm just drawing it up right now, but you got something else coming down the road. So just keep your eyes open for that, man. We always trying to trying to innovate and keep things keep things moving forward. See, I got some more wire here. So the first part of the day, man, I'm gonna be building wires. Let's go outside real quick and show you what's going on. It's another beautiful sunny day in South Florida, as you can see. That's why we got to pay all kind of money for the damn property down here, cause we get that beautiful sunshine. Anyway, so you see. These are built already, right? These are some new ones that I just built. Um, these wires right here, I got them when I was feeling kind of bossy. So if you see what it says on there, it says property of Wasi Entertainment Group. And it got the phone number on there. So 
I don't think I'm gonna do that again because them damn wires were like two thousand dollars, two thousand dollars for some copper wires just because I had you know had them put the name and stuff on there. So that stuff could get kind of pricey. You know what I mean? But anyway, just dropping in, man, giving y'all a little quick shout out, saying good morning. Hope y'all have a blessed day, man. It's a Thursday, you know, a day or so away from the weekend. Hope y'all got some good things planned. You know, get some money out there, man. There's a lot of stuff going on, so things are starting to slowly open up, man. So I just hope everybody in the sewing family is doing well. You know, your real family is doing well. <clears throat> you know, all that good stuff. And once again, man, keep it positive. Wasi, over and out.